Welcome to the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast. I'm Jasmine Haley, healthcare provider turned educator, entrepreneur, and startup strategist. Not too long ago, I was burnt out, overwhelmed, depressed, and full of fear from a toxic work environment. I created my business out of necessity to create a legacy I can be proud of today. It helps me transform the lives of women every single day to pursue their dreams and entrepreneurial goals. I created this podcast to share the empowering stories of entrepreneurial women, help you break through self-doubt to your greatness, and share business strategies to help you create a thriving and profitable business. If you are an emerging entrepreneur or business owner that wants to create the mindset needed to escape burnout, reclaim your personal power, and pursue your entrepreneurial dreams, this podcast is for you. Stay tuned and listen in. Welcome to the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast. This is your host, Jasmine Haley, the founder of the Breakthrough to Excellence Network. And I can't believe it. This is the last episode of season one. Wow. Y'all, behind the scenes, I was like, I cannot believe I'm starting another podcast. I cannot believe... I have to fire my podcast editor, then get a new one, which is why our episodes will stall for so long, y'all. Y'all already know when it comes to business, things do not work out like how you plan, honey. But guess what? I made it. I made it. Shout out to the most amazing podcast editor anyone can have. Currently, my podcast editor is Sasha Huff. She helps with all of the editing. I'm so thankful for her because we finally made it to episode 36. I also want to give a shout out to my team, Bianca, the most amazing executive assistant, Aikisha, the most amazing accountability coach and community manager of the Breakthrough to Excellence Network, and our newest, she's new, but we're going to shout her out anyway for giving it a try, right? (laughs) Jenny, who's our content manager. I just, I can't believe it. I made it to the last episode and that's why this training isn't like a formal training where I actually have you know, a PowerPoint and I'm going through acronyms and things of that nature. It's about the lessons I learned this year. Like what are the seven lessons I learned in my business pivot? I often have said quite a bit that this, this, this pivot of all pivots literally snatch my edges. Okay. In fact, I was looking at my profit and loss sheets from my bookkeeper. I can see why I was ready to quit. Like I saw what my figures was like in August compared to July and it was insane. And and I'm talking about insane difference. Okay. Thousands of dollars to literally under a thousand dollars. It just went, it tanked. And so why am I sharing that detail? Because I need you to understand that even as a six figure business owner myself, and as I am working towards this new pivot and my brand and focusing on making it very clear about the work that I do and working with clients, that even I, with all of the knowledge I've had in over four and a half years of business, have had struggle, okay? And guess what I did? I decided to continue to push through and do contrary to what you're supposed to be doing, right? What you think you're supposed to be doing. When it got harder, what did I do? I invested more. I hired more people. And boom, just like that, my energy shifted, it changed and allowed me to be in a place where I can welcome, I can welcome more income into my business. So for 2021, I am planning on $300,000 with my team. 2022, I'm planning for 500K. And then 2023, I'm going to plan for a million dollar year. Does that scare me? Heck yeah. Oh my word. Yes. Yes. Because these are new heights that I'm working towards to reach. So if you're currently listening to this podcast, you're listening to it one, because you have a business or you're thinking about having a business, you want it to be profitable. You may be wanting to get out of your your job. Y'all two weeks ago, I quit a job I took to give me a little bit of cushion. But in addition to that, I love teaching. I quit it. Wasn't planning to. I quit it. Why? Because I want to be able to homeschool my children. I want to be able to homeschool my children. So as a business owner, I've always had a job on the side somewhere, 
I always had my hand in multiple pots. And so this year I'm doing a hundred percent my business, like fully, fully, like no side jobs nowhere. That's it. So I can't wait to share in season two, what my behind the scenes is like as I'm doing that along the way. I want you to come along with me on this journey and see that it's possible that this chick, this chick from Jamaica, Queens, honey, is figuring it out with no business formal training, is figuring it out how to make a business profitable and grow it. So can you. And I'm sharing it all. I don't hold nothing back. So, of course, you know, I save the best from my paid members now. That's why you need to go to jasminehaley.com, click that link that says Bits Coaching, see the transformations my clients are getting, see what it is that I offer, whether you're starting from scratch where you're at $0 in your business and you want to get it to consistent 3K, or you're ready to map out your full six-figure year with me in my 100K framework group coaching, or you just want to accelerate your goals, work with me for a short period of time, private one-on-one coaching. The options are there, and I've worked with people from all levels, whether you're at the beginning or you're already making 30, 40, 50K a month. I've worked with them all, and many of us, we don't realize, yeah, the pockets may be different, but our issues are really the same, are really the same. So I hope that as you listen to the lessons that I've learned in my business pivot, you'll see some of yourself. You'll catch yourself in doing some of the things that I felt were making it more challenging for me. Not only do we have the quarantine that we're dealing with in COVID, but I was making it more challenging for myself as I was in this business pivot. And as soon as I let some stuff go, the income started coming in. Was it scary? Yes. Did I keep pushing through? Yes. So I want to encourage each of you, each of you to keep pushing through. You can do this. You can do this. And if you need help, If you want to get out the tumbleweeds of your head and you need someone to streamline the process for you step by step, it's written out. This is what you need to do. I'm your girl. I'm here to support you. Whether you want to come into our free Facebook group, Breakthrough to Excellence from Side Hustler to CEO, where you'll get trainings from myself, or you want to hop in one of our paid programs, I am here for you. Or you just want to binge my entire podcast, I am here for you. I'm looking forward to the trajectory of my business as I continue to push forward and go through each month, each day, each year. And so I want to encourage you to share this episode if you find that it is something that has motivated you. Has it provided some lessons for your business? Leave me a podcast review. Please leave me a podcast review. I will shout you out in season two. Leave me a podcast review that allows others to find me or just email me. Let me know what your thoughts are. I love to hear from listeners. So without further ado, this is our last episode. Yay! Pew, 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 pew. And we are going into the seven last lessons I learned in my business pivot. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you soak it in. I hope you take what you need, throw out the rest, and keep Building and scaling that business, honey, to six figures or more. Bye. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the training. Our training for this episode is the seven lessons I learned in my business pivot. Y'all, I have said this so many times that my pivot into this new industry with a new ICA and rebranding myself has been snatching my edges left and right. This has probably been the most challenging year in business. Not my first year where you think most people's business is completely going to be challenging. It is this year. It's this year as I'm moving towards my fifth year and I'm in this business pivot in addition to being in a quarantine. So I said seven, but knowing me, I may want to add a little bit of information. So I'm hoping that this can encourage you as you're on your own road in your business. So whether you're a service provider or product-based entrepreneur, these lessons will help you. All right. So here's my first one. This is my first lesson. 
it's interesting that it actually manifested itself this year of all the years that I've been in business. It's this year. So let me just recap first really quick. I'm moving towards my fifth year. I've been in business for about four and a half years. I started my business in 2016 because I left a very toxic work environment and I knew that I couldn't stay there any longer. It was making me ill. I was dealing with stress-induced illness from being burnout, dealing with you know bullying, toxic behavior at my job. Thought it was the only place I could ever be able to work. Honestly, I thought I was gonna be there the rest of my life until my children got out of school and I retired there and it didn't work out that way. I left that job, not having any other teaching positions and started my business and started building my brand and bootstrapped my business the entire way two six figures. And after having a huge measure of success in the world of healthcare and dentistry specifically, I decided in 2020, I was going to pivot. Why? Because I had that inkling for a long time. I wanted to branch out and not limit myself any longer in the realm that I was in. So I was hosting events live events, virtual events. I was selling continuing education courses. I'm speaking all over the country. I'm getting paid to speak all over the country. I am coaching other professionals. I am getting sponsorship from corporate. I'm getting sponsors for my events. Y'all, I was doing it all, okay? I had two podcasts as well. So there wasn't really a reason for me to leave because every year I was seeing myself grow, but I realized within myself, it was time for me to make that pivot and that change. I didn't want to be pigeonhole into one specific industry. And I knew that I was reaching in my mind a cap for myself financially. And I wanted to grow bigger than what that specific realm of healthcare could provide for me. So I pivoted y'all and it's scary as I don't know what. So this training is all about the lessons I learned in that pivot, because I honestly came into this pivot thinking that I was going to be able to replicate it very easily. I said, okay, I've built a six-figure business. I know how to replicate. I'll be fine, right? No, okay? It's a whole different ball game. And in fact, it's a measure of difficulty when you start from not really having anything and you build it to actually pivoting from having something and then going into an industry where no one knows who the heck you are, right? And knowing that you had a measure of success and now it's not looking like that now because now you've got to gather a whole new community around the work that you're doing. And for me, I wasn't really completely honest with myself with how that's going to look and how that was going to look. And now here I am. So here's a lesson. First, number one, check your ego, sis. Check your ego, sis. Check your ego, sis, okay? Because one of the biggest things I have seen to some roadblocks, either with my clients or myself, we feel deep down inside, even though we say we, we're coachable, we feel like we really know it all, right? You, we're, we feel like, well, if I just show up this one time, that's going to translate into me making money. No, it does not. No, it does not. In fact, you're not entitled to anything really, right? We're deserving of of being treated with respect and, and to be loved and to have what our desires are, right? But that doesn't mean it happens like this. Yet we come into business thinking that it does. I fell trapped to that in some ways, not in every way, but in some ways, thinking that if I show up and I post this one time and I make it clear what it's for, I'll be good, right? But it's not enough. And a lot of times what we find is our ego gets in the way. We start making up some false narrative about, oh, it's, it's the people, it's this and that. No, it's how you're showing up, right? And who you're showing up for. So sometimes the blocks in our business have nothing to do with the community that we're serving and may have to do with us. So this year, this lesson in my business pivot helped me to appreciate that I really needed to view and look at myself and say, is it my ego right now? Or am I really stating fact, right? Am I really taking a look at the growth of my business, at the number of conversions, at the number of followers that I have, at the engagement, at, at you know the outcomes that I'm having as I'm putting myself out there? Am I looking at it as data or am I creating some you know, crazy story and narrative that is 
unfortunately blocking the energy necessary for the right type of people to come my way. Okay. So again, the first lesson is check your ego, sis. Check your ego, sis. Especially in a business pivot, whether you're starting at the beginning or you're feeling like you are feeling that energy is off to get to that next level. So I had planned for myself in 2021 to reach 300,000. That's my goal, right? I'm planning for that right now for my team. 2022, my goal is 500K, all right? 2023, my goal is a million dollars in revenue. Those are my goals. That is what I'm planning for. I'm building that foundation for it. And one of the key things you've got to understand, and this is what I see often with my clients, is that when we're reaching that level of discomfort and we're really ready to go over to that next level, our ego gets in the way. It can cause us to self-sabotage ourselves. It can cause us to be so fearful that we backtrack and stop moving towards that next level. Towards the end of this, I'm going to share the four, how many books? One, two, three, four, the four books that were really great for me this year to read in my business pivot. But anywho, we, it gets in the way. It blocks us. It blocks us from that measure of success. Why is it that 90% of women don't reach six figures in their business? Why? Why? Not only is it because we're so used to serving others and we're asking for permission, we're not willing to flex on what our strengths are, we're not willing to, you know, do the uncomfortable things often that we have to do when it comes to having a business. And a lot of times we don't feel like we're deserving of it. So let's check our ego, let's get honest, and let's get accountable for the results in our business, okay? All right, the next lesson I learn is... This is actually in a company with the first one is get out of your own head. Okay. Get out of your own head. And in times of struggle or deficit, or in times where you're in that death valley of entrepreneurship, what should you do? Should you retract? Should you not invest? Should you not outsource? No, it's the opposite. You actually should expand more. When it's harder, you should expand more. So sometime around the summer, which wasn't that long ago, I was so dramatic. I was like, oh my God, who is me? Like, I don't know if I've done the right thing. I don't know if this business pivot is going to last. I don't even know if this is the right decision for me. And I needed to take a break, which is what I did to get out of my own head. I read a book, which I'll share with you guys later. And then I said, all right, it's time for me to outsource. I hired someone. Even when financially at that point, I wasn't seeing the traction that would make me feel most comfortable with hiring. But I said, you know what? It ain't working just by myself. I'm going to hire someone. And then boom, I invested in Kamon Napier, who is an HR strategist. I invested in her to help me find my unicorn community manager. Aikisha, if she's on here, yes, she is on here right now. She is the bomb, okay? I love this. Someone wrote in the chat, um, Tanyelle Price. She said her goal for 2021 is 100K. That's what I'm talking about, sis. Yes. State it. State it out loud. I'm stating out loud to you because if you don't go out there and state exactly what it is that you're going to do, right? You need to plan it, but it's okay to actually say it out loud for it to be real for you. I love that you stated that. So Kimon helped me find my community manager, accountability coach, Aikisha Taylor. She is the bomb.com. Okay. And then I hired again for content manager. So here's the thing, like, so when I made those hires, even when just a few months ago, I was like, I don't know if this is the right thing. I need to give up. Like, I just, maybe this isn't it. Maybe I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I know I've had some validation. I know I've gotten some people, some results, but maybe I should just, but what I realized was I didn't put enough effort. Did I really do as much as I can? Did I let go of task, menial task in my business so that I can get some clarity and be in the innovator role? Because what I am is an innovator. And so If you are a CEO of a business, you're an innovator. 
at some time, all the admin stuff, answering emails, doing all these little tasks to keep the back end of your business working is blocking your energy from getting to next levels. You can have a measure of success. I have clients who are at 30K months, 40K months, but when they're ready for that next level, more than likely, they got to get more off of their plate. A lot of people come to me and they say, especially in the beginning, they're like, oh, well, I don't, I don't have enough. I don't have enough money. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You just don't know how to strategize and get it right now. But yes, you do. I hired from the very beginning of having a business, $4 an hour, $5 an hour, $6 an hour, whatever. You can find someone within a budget for you. And you've got to understand, as soon as I hired those people, the money started coming in. The money just started coming in. Okay. And so as I'm moving towards the goal of 2021 of getting 300 K right. And 500 K the following year into my million dollar year, three years from now, that means I have to set up a foundation for it and I've got to stop playing small. All right. Number three, you've got to be patient and you must have faith. So here is where I needed to fully be in alignment with what mattered to me with my values, but also to understand that I'm that chick (laughs) and everything will work out. Okay. Right. So for me, I am a Christian and it's very important for me to, to maintain a level of faith for myself and my family, whatever yours may be, you've got to also have a measure of faith in yourself and yourself and figuring it out. And a lot of us deep down inside, we're like, well, just show me how to do this social media or just show me how to how to put my offer together. That's all I need. Yeah, I can do all of that. I can show you all of that. I can show you how to start your podcast. I can show you how to create courses. I can show you how to do a framework of your offer and ask for premium level prices. I can do all of that. But if deep down inside you don't have faith in your abilities, that will demonstrate itself and when you're trying to close a sale with someone. It will also demonstrate itself when you're ready to raise your prices. I am a coach and consultant that is premium level. It's, it's, that's what it is, okay? You can have a million dollar business, you can have a six figure business, you can have a multiple six figure business and don't have premium cost. But I know the type of work that I do and what I do and the coddling and hold handing all that stuff and the things that I create, I have to charge premium. And the results that people get are double, triple, quadruple, whatever they invest in my services because I am invested in their success. So there's a difference in how I deliver and there'll be a difference in how you de- deliver as well. But do you have faith in your ability to, to do so? And are you patient enough to show up consistently even when things look like it's hitting the fan. Are you ready to step into that CEO role? Be patient, have some faith in your ability and move past those challenges. If you can tell me right now that you're not ready, that means you need to do some more inner work because business is more than just making passive income, y'all. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's more than getting profit. It is a mental, physical, and spiritual journey. And I've seen it already in my, in my own life, okay? Here's number four. This is the fourth lesson I learned this year in my business pivot. Keep the focus on your strengths. Keep the focus on your strengths. Keep the focus on your strengths. So I do well speaking, public speaking, okay? I like speaking. I can come up here. I can have an outline. I can have maybe one or two words and I'll speak to you for an hour or so. I enjoy that. That is one of my strengths. What I don't want to do is some of the tasks that I have my team doing right now, right? Those aren't my strengths. So before, when I first started my podcast, my first podcast, because I have three, my first one was the Mom Genesis podcast. And that podcast I started and I was doing everything. So we're talking about managing the guests that are coming in, sending out the emails, I was creating the audiograms myself. I was also editing that podcast and hosting events and doing everything else. And I thought that, oh, I'll just do it myself to save money and blah, 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 blah. But guess what, y'all? I wasn't in my zone of genius. And so what was happening in that realm of my business, I would get very resentful 
very resentful and just like when people will come to me, I wasn't in the best energy. Well, do you think that energy is something that's going to allow you to actually bring some money into your business? People catch on to that. So that's the same concept I had to learn again from my pivot was to keep my focus on my strengths. And that's how I knew when I was feeling like I was in that pit of that despair. And I was like, oh, not only did I have the, the struggle of the quarantine and, and teaching on the side, I also had to homeschool my kids, right? And they were with me 24 seven. So now I have more distractions. Well, that's even more reason to outsource. It's even more reason for me to keep the focus on my strengths. And again, as soon as I did that and I allowed myself to be in that zone of genius and I allowed others to be in their zone of genius, I've seen the growth in my business. And I also, uh, and I'll, I'll go back to this. I think she may be on here. I don't know if she's um, watching still, but I hired a coach to help me with social media. Her name is Dion, Biz Coaching by Dion. She helped me with my social media to understand how to get more out with the reach of what I wanted. I was investing even when I was scared on whether or not I could still pull through in my business. Why? I had measure of faith in my abilities. If I got a little bit of help here, if I got a little bit of help there, I can grow. I can make it. Okay. The next one is don't believe the hype. All right. I invested in a coaching program earlier this year that I fell for the glitz and glam of what that person represented. What was different was that in previous years, I've always gone with how the connection was with that person. I've always had amazing coaches that were like, one-on-one -on -one with me that really cared about my success that weren't there taking money. Well, when I did my business pivot and I thought in my mind, well, I'll try something different. I'll go, go this way because this person is this well-known figure in this industry. And that, oh, not, that isn't always the best decision for you. In fact, I want to encourage you as you're in your business journey to choose to work with people that you feel really want to see your success who really care about the little minute details that aren't just, let me just get you to charge money and buy my program for $3,000 or more. There are many programs that are out there like that. And that's why I didn't really get the help that I needed. But I also realized that sometimes, some of us, we need a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. And it may not be a self-study program. So don't believe the hype is going to protect you and has protected me from getting into things that aren't really the best fit for me. Yes, it says that for $27, I can teach you how to, you know, do 5,000 cartwheels in one second. Yes, it says that. Yes, it says they've done that. But is it, is it what's best for me at this time? Or am I falling prey to the accolades that this person may have? Like look for those signs to see whether or not they really want you to grow. All right, number six, this is your business and growth sometimes isn't linear. It may not always seem rational. You may come into programs as you're growing in your business that says you need to, okay, for instance, there's a whole battle of, and I've seen this with coaches, you need to only offer one thing, only offer one thing, right? And that will get you to this level in your business. And so initially early in the year, I decided to get rid of all the things, right? Which was a good, a good idea in some instance and just stick with one, but that didn't work for me in my business, right? I needed to have some flexibility. I needed to streamline, but I needed to have some flexibility. And I also needed to look at what worked for me and my business. So I went back to, okay, let me get this. Let me get this together. I will have an affiliate stream of income. I will have a one-on-one -on -one stream of income. I will have my membership stream of income. I will have my group coaching stream of, stream of income. And so that works for me. And so I think it's a bet, best for y'all to know that, you know, sometimes you'll go in and you'll hear people, they say, you must do it this way and you must do it that way. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, to really step in a CEO role and to get to those levels that you desire, you have to, my friends, you have to understand that it may not seem rational to some. It may not always go in one smooth path. You may be like this, you know, in your business, 
but how clear are you on your mission? How clear are you on your vision? How clear are you on your values? How clear are you on your goals? How are you mapping that out? We've talked a lot about mapping and the KPIs and things of that nature. How are you mapping that out to get to that goal? That's what's most important. And again, that goes back to number three, which is about having faith, having faith. So now when I listen to other, you know, people as I'm learning from them, because there's always something you can learn from someone. When I listen to them, I'm like, hmm, okay, that's a good point that they make. Will that work for me in my business? Mm, It's going to put too much stress on me. It's not going to help me continue to have my business and run it with ease. So therefore, that's not going to work. And guess what? I'm right. They're right. Everyone else, it's their journey. You make the decision. You're the CEO. Stop asking for permission. You don't need anyone's permission. You can be strategic. You can streamline it. You can tailor your messaging so that you can reach more people. You can create the systems. You can automate. Yep, great, wonderful. That's the kind of stuff that I teach as well. But at the end of the day, how are you building your business for you? How are you building your business for you? All right, here's my seventh one. This one is a good one, y'all. This one's a real good one. Ask for that sale and follow up. You know, I've heard a lot this year. Rachel Rogers is the one that often says this. She's like, the sale is in the follow-up, honey, you know? And so I realize that oftentimes, like myself, people are busy. People are busy. How is it that you're going to remind them or direct them towards your sales funnel, towards your, your, your sales funnel could be many different things, right? But how is it that you're directing these people into your community so that you can nurture them? Or how is it that you are getting them on to an inquiry call or giving them the transformation that you know could provide a level of whatever it is, impact, empowerment? you know, wellness, whatever it is that you sell. So for me, and what I've learned in this journey for 2020 is that sliding up into DMs happens a lot more when it comes to online, especially with this quarantine that we're in and not being afraid to follow up. Many people forget they're busy. They've got lives outside of what they're doing day to day. So don't feel like you're bothering anybody. What I do is, and what I, ha- what I choose to do to reframe my mind is say, I've got something that's going to help alleviate some of the stress that's on their back right now. I know, and I believe in what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to follow up and it's not personal. That's where the ego comes in, right? Check your ego, sis. It's not personal. I'm going to do the work to follow up with them until I hear a reply And after that, it's their decision. They choose whether to move forward. But I know that I did my part to make sure that they understood that I was there for them. So how are you doing that? Are you showing up enough? Are you normally stating, you know, you check in one time and then you leave it alone because you feel bad? We'll follow up again, you know, and then follow up again one more time. Whether that's you asking for a testimonial that's going to lead to more sales, whether that's asking for them to join the program that you're doing that could lead to that sale, like whatever you're doing, make sure you're focusing on those income generating tasks, of course, but that you're asking for those sales and you keep that follow up. That follow up is everything. It is everything. And find ways to automate that follow up if necessary, if you tend to forget. The sale is in the follow-up. It is in the follow-up. All right, so let me share my top reads for you. And my top reads for this year is number one, The Big Leap. Love that book. And then directly after you read The Big Leap, I would like you to read The Joy of Genius. The Joy of Genius and The Big Leap is written by the same author. The next book I want you to read is The 10X Rule. Now, listen to me. The author of this book is a little crazy, okay? He's a little cuckoo. (laughs) But what he shares is so true. So if you feel like you're doing enough in your business, sometimes it really isn't enough. It really isn't. So how can you 10X that? And so that 10X rule book is one that kind of whipped me in a shape when I was feeling like, well, I tried it all. No, I hadn't. No, I really had not. 
And then The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster is a really good book to kind of reframe you and help you to understand that there are going to be challenges in having a business. Whether you decide to have a business as a side passive income as you are still at your nine to five or whether you decide to go fully on in your business, it's going to be challenging. It's challenging for everyone. But the ones who continue to win are the ones that consistently show up through the good times and the bad times. And the ones that aren't always necessarily tied to the amount of income that's coming in, because sometimes for some businesses, there are dry spells. So how can you overcome that part in a business that can often come? Are you measuring your success by just the amount of money that comes in? Because my friends, if you do that, especially in the beginning, and and of course, it's important to be strategic and profitable, but it isn't the only thing that you should be looking at as as a key driver or a KPI, a key performance indicator in your business. Yes, the finances are important, but at certain parts in your, in your business, depending on the climate of the world at the time, depending on if you're at the beginning stages and you're still building a community, all of that, how else are you measuring your success in that business? And how are you preparing your mind to get through that? It's a huge level of grit that's needed determination on your part. And again, like I said, patience and faith, patience and faith. All right. That concludes my seven lessons in my business pivot. I am going to welcome your questions at this point. I'm going to stay on for another 10 minutes or so. So let me know. So the guy that wrote the 10 X rule, the question is about the guy that wrote the 10 X rule. The guy that wrote the 10 X rule is Grant Cardone. All right, let's see if you guys have any other questions. Thanks, Akeisha. Akeisha is putting all that in the comments so you guys can see that, which is awesome. All right, any other questions for your business? I'll wait a little bit here to see if anyone's willing to ask one. Oh, oh, this one's a good one. Thank you, Tanika. So Tanika asked a very good question. This is great. So how do you know who to hire first? Excellent, excellent, excellent question. So when you are hiring, um, it's important for you to figure out like what task you need to eliminate off of your plate, all right? So what I would suggest, and um, many other people suggest this, is to create a list of all of the things that you're doing in your business. Um, You can do a time study. So if you go into Google and you search time study, you can look that up and they'll have like things for like actual activities that you can actually write in from every hour exactly what task you're doing. So like from five to, you know, 11 o'clock at night, what are your tasks? Okay. And out of those tasks that you write down, and it's good to do it for at least three days, All right, three days of your business because most of us in business aren't doing the same thing every day. So if you do that within three days, you write down the list of things that you do, check mark the ones that you wanna delegate. Figure out which of those those things you want to delegate. And then what I'm gonna encourage you to do is, and I know it seems overwhelming, but it's going to ease the process. Anytime you're hiring someone, it is extremely stressful if you don't have systems in place. Well, what does the system mean? Well, if one of your tasks on your list of things that you're doing in your business is to create a newsletter or create an email to send to your community, right? Well, that's something that as a CEO, you don't necessarily have to do. You can task that out to someone. They can actually do that. Okay, awesome. So you're gonna go to Jane Smith and say, hey, can you do this task for me? And she's gonna go to you and say, well, how do I do that? What do I do? How do I use your system? How do I use your email software? Then you're going to have to, if you don't have this written down somewhere, right? And organize, as I've talked to you before, I've got my business organized on Asana. You're going to have to sit down and train them through that and have enough patience. Now, do you have the patience to do that? Do you have the time to sit and train them? If you don't, you should be documenting the tasks that you want to outsource step by step. What is it that you do, right? 
1 through 10, 1 through 20, and have that stored in an electronic format, Trello board, Asana, whatever, so that when you outsource, you say, this is your task, this is what I want you to do, here are the steps. And you don't even have to think about it anymore, right? Of course, you'll follow up to make sure they run, they um, follow through with that. But for the most part, most of us just need a virtual assistant to start with just a regular virtual assistant that will help us with some of the admin tasks, whether it's emails, following up, engaging with individuals on social media, not a social media manager, but a VA that can do multiple things. Many of us would need to start there. It could be the back end of your website, helping you make some adjustments on the website and things of that nature. So look at what's on your plate right now and then determine from what's on your plate what you will want to outsource first. And a lot of times that person will be the person you would hire. And for, and for most of us, it's a virtual assistant, a regular assistant that specializes in helping take tasks off your plate. My next hire was the community manager. Now this is for this year. I've hired other people in the past, but for this year, it was the executive assistant, my community manager, because I knew that I had, I was going to have a free community. I could not spend all of my time like I was before in the past in there. And then I had hired a content manager. My next hire would be my online business manager. That person will be my person that all of my employees would contact first before they get to me. So that's actually putting me away from being all in on the task and me just in the clear innovator role, creating content. So hopefully that kind of helps you. Yep, great. No problem, Tanika. Hopefully that helps you in kind of determining what and when you should hire. And more than likely, if you're feeling overwhelmed, I have a reel on my thing that I kind of did, you know, today with my kids, they helped me with it. If you're feeling overwhelmed, like you want to pull your hair out and you're like, uh, like that, it's time for you to outsource. It's time for you to outsource. It is possible for, to find someone in your budget. It is possible to find someone in your budget. Absolutely. Okay. So the options that I offer for people that like that want to work with me, we have a breakthrough to excellence network, where we help you break through the fear, the overwhelm, the self sabotage and get to your level of excellence in your business. And so we do that by three ways. Okay, you can either join my start your biz membership, if you are currently making $0 in your business and you want to get to consistent 3K months. We encourage you to be a part of that membership for at least three months. Now, here's the thing with Start Your Biz membership. I'm breaking down stuff that you guys are trying to figure out like for free all over in one location. So you're gonna get the core training on how to identify who your ICA is. Who is your ideal client avatar? How do you develop a brand? How do you start building your email list? And then also including information like how to start your business. What are some tech needs that you may have in your business? And then in addition to that, I'll have in juicy videos that kind of show you the back end of my business of how I've systematized it and have got it organized. And again, it's meant to not overwhelm you as you're moving towards that consistent 3K right? And in the Start Your Biz membership, you'll have an accountability coach, Aikisha, who is freaking amazing. We also have a mindset coach that meets with us once a month, and you have a live strategy Q&A with me once a month, and you get the support you need to get to that 3K. And we're going to be following you to hold you accountable with that. It's no longer just, we'll take this course and then we forget about you. No, you actually have live people who are breathing and actually are, will be checking in on you. The next group coaching program we have is a Breakthrough to Excellence 100K six month group coaching program. These are the people that have already gotten to that 3K a month consistently. They're at 5K or more. And they're at the place right now where they're overwhelmed with the day-to-day -day tasks. They've hit a roadblock in scaling more and they can't really get there because they're completely overwhelmed with taking in new clients or bringing in, you know, staff, they don't even know how or where to kind of tweak where they are in their business. But they also know that they want to get to six figures or more, they want to amplify their brand. But they also know that by doing so, they would be caught in this chaos of a storm. So this person will be with us for six months. 
and we will work along with them to build their confidence, to construct the systems, to help them automate their business, get truly clear about how they serve, create the offer, the 100K offer, understand how to um, close on sales and to maximize their time on social media, and then to elevate their brand, to get them more visible and to learn other ways for visibility, such as speaking and podcasting. So that's what the 100K framework is. And then we, with the 100K framework, you get more time with me. You get a chance to get a strategic plan where we actually write down what you need to do to strategize to get to 100K. I will map that out for you. And then you would have two quarterly meetings with me to make sure that you're on track with getting that 100k and the reason why it's six months is because you need the time to kind of tweak and try out different things as you're going along and organizing your business and getting to that point doesn't happen overnight and the third way to work with me is by private one-on-one coaching many people love that because they'll get an opportunity to ask whatever questions they want and to be able to skyrocket their results you work a lot more quicker when you have that one-on-one time with me. So a lot of clients choose that. I am still in the beta test right now of a biz accelerator. So I am not actually labeling that as an option. I'm seeing if this is a viable option and and this is what people want. A lot of people want to work for a shorter amount of time to get the max amount of results, but they don't want to focus so much on mindset. They just want the strategy. They just want to know the framework, the sales, the branding, and how to get their clients organized. And so that's what I'm offering in my biz accelerator at this time. Time, at the time of this recording, and we'll see in 2021 if we keep that um, along as one of our offers to people who are just interested in working for four weeks with me, meeting with me once a week, and then also having Voxer access to me as well. All right, so that describes my programs. I'm going to drop my link inside of the comment section. So if any of you are interested in finding out more about how to work along with me to get your business together, to get to the point where you are actually, actually like, yeah, for real, taking ideas that you had in your mind for years and actually seeing them implemented and getting them to a point where they come into fruition and you're able to scale and make more profit in your business, That's my jam. That's what I love to do. I love to get you out of those tumbleweeds. So if you're interested, let's talk. It doesn't matter. I want to tell you something. When I, when I met my coach a few years ago, I felt like maybe she's out of my league, but don't tell yourself that. Okay. If you have a desire to scale to hundred K get on the phone with me first. Let me tell you that you're not a fit, right? Let me tell you that first, but if you got a desire to get to hundred K or more in your business and you want to be able to get there, get on the phone with me. Let me hear and see where you're at in your business. And let me see if we're a good fit. I will tell you if we're not a good fit and I will direct you on where you should go if I can't help you get out of the tumbleweeds in your head as you scale your business. But don't come up with that narrative yourself. You don't determine that. Take the first step. Reach out to me. Fill out that form. Let me know. All right. Let me know where you are where you want to be. And I will let you know whether I can help you or if you should go to another source. All right. So we're here for you. It's been so great. We're going to have, let's see, we're going to have two more days of giveaways tonight. We'll be giving away a massage envy gift card. And then we're going to be giving away two more things. The grand prize is on Friday. So you really don't want to miss that. So far, we've given away an Amazon gift card. We've given away a Target gift card. And today we're giving away a Massage Envy gift card. So if you're watching this on Instagram, make sure you check my bio and you go to the link to enter into this Facebook group. I thank you so much, all of you, for being a part of this group. And I thank you for all the listeners that are listening to this podcast. I love what I do. I love impacting the lives of the women that I have a chance to impact. And I love seeing all of you successful because seeing you successful is building up our communities in beautiful ways. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for tuning into the show. Dive in deeper by visiting the show notes for this episode or listening to more episodes on jasminehaley.com. If you found value in the show, share with a friend or leave us a review. I'll see you next time.